I know that as a Death Watch player, I'm expected to be miserable right now. But as an Adeptus Sororitas player, I'm happy that I get my Death Watch in my sister's army again. Yay! But extra sad things about the Imperial Agents Codex that we should all be gnashing our teeth over are as follows. There is no Inquisitorial Stormtroopers, so my perfect ideal of a return to the Witch Hunters Codex is dashed. A requisition unit like Tempesta Skions or Kazakin would have been lovely. In Ashes of Faith, the kill team box, we were encouraged to have veteran guardsmen or Sisters of Silence or Kazakin. I'll figure out a way to get them back. A convoluted way. There is also no Space Marine requisition. There are requisitions of Sisters of Battle with modified rules and requisition Grey Knight Terminators, but no requisition Space Marine units to support the Death Watch. Stern Guard and Vanguard veterans would have been perfect. The reason that the Stern Guard had special ammunition at one time is because they were stand-ins for Death Watch. And the confusingly named Inquisitorial Agents in the Agents of the Imperium Codex have lost their Demon Host and their Jacaro. If you are sad for the loss, please type goodbye monkey in the comments. I'm sure it won't be confusing for anyone who's coming in who hasn't watched the video. And the Imperial Agents have gone down to one wound each. The Inquisitorial Agents appear in all the battle forces for the different Odos. This is about as confusing as having all the kill team boxes which can be filled in the game kill team but are not Death Watch kill teams which don't have new rules in the updated kill team. Just legacy rules. All of the Death Watch units have had a change. They are no longer Adeptus Astartes keyword. They are Agents of the Imperium keyword. And they no longer have the Oath of Moment, they have Assigned Agents. So Assigned Agents means the small number of Death Watch units can be fielded as allies to Space Marines with the Assigned Agents rule, but without the other rules that they had before, they won't be getting rerolls from Oath of Moment, but we brought our own rerolls with us. We won't benefit from any of the Space Marine stratagems, not even Armor of Contempt, because we are not Adeptus Astartes, and that version of Armour of Contempt requires you to be Adeptus Astartes. There is a separate version of Armour of Contempt that appears in the Agents of the Imperium Codex, but if you're using your Death Watch in the Space Marine Codex, you don't get that version of the stratagem. You only get to have one detachment at any one time. But there is something new we can do that we couldn't do before. You can have Blood Angel units in your army fighting alongside the Death Watch. Or, if you really wanted can have space wolves. That's also viable in the rules. I'll just look down on you. When you're fielding the Death Watch alone in the Agents of the Imperium Army, yeah you don't get much from the assigned agent special rule. But instead, there's meant to be different points values for the units whether they're fielded in the Agents of the Imperium Codex or if they're fielded as allies. We haven't seen that in the Codex so this may have been a later change by Games Workshop as the points in the book only show one value. But we should be seeing later on a document released that shows Agents of the Imperium as Agents of the Imperium points and then Agents of the Imperium as Allies points. As their own Agents of the Imperium, there is a detachment for the Death Watch and it looks very familiar. There is a change which may just be a typo to the way the Purgator's tactics works. It used to be that a critical hit was a precision attack now it says a critical wound, so if you use the Hellfire shells and you want to shoot at a character and the unit you're shooting at has the infantry keyword, you're getting precision shots on a 2 plus. I'm not sure this is intentional, but that would make us amazing for one turn with one stratagem at killing characters. And the Imperialis fleet detachment also should work okay for Death Watch in small points games. But that's just how the Agents of the Imperium is. We don't really have anti-tank. Not in the same way the Battle Sisters don't have anti-tank, but in Bringers of Flame, Melter Guns are okay. There's no anti-tank. You have to have allied Imperial Knights into the detachment for the army that is the allies. Then we have some anti-tank. This is a fine codex. It works. But the codex only has the Death Watch kill team veterans, Captain Artemis and the Watchmaster as infantry. The Corvus Blackstar is there as a vehicle and the ubiquitous Imperial Rhino. The Rhino doesn't get the Death Watch keyword and won't get stratagem support in the Ordo Xenos Alien Hunter Detachment but I wanted you to know that it is there. That is how you can transport your Death Watch around. All of the other kill teams that we did have in the Index 
will be in a separate Legends document yet to come. But we don't know exactly how that will work with the kill team special rule for mixed toughness for units like the Proteus kill team. If there is no kill team rule, you just use the highest toughness. So as long as there is one bike or one terminator in that squad, you have toughness 5 on that unit. Though I'm saying they should have rules in Legends, not every kill team may survive in Legends. Worst case, it is only kill team Cassius and they fix that error, finally, so that the combat weapon is different to the power weapon in profile. I'm weirdly excited for the Legends document. I want to see what they do with units like Kill Team Cassius. Are we going to have Cassius as a character? Meaning that the unit gets requisitioned in other armies as the character requisition. So you could have Kill Team Cassius and a squad of 10 Death Watch in a 1000 point army. Or are they going to get split up into Cassius the character and the other 10 models are the kill team that goes under the retinue? It has implications either way and I'm interested to see what they do with it. The kill teams and how they're made up and what's legal as a kill team changes every edition, at least once if not twice. If you've been playing Death Watch for any length of time, this is not a big shock to you. I've been playing Death Watch for about 10 months and I am not surprised. Games Workshop has been moving to only have units they sell and only have them equipped with what's in the box. Anything else gets Legends rules. Legends is a confusing place. Games Workshop wants to support existing players with rules, but doesn't want to show them off to new players and talk about how cool these units are, because if the new player is like, awesome, sell me some. Games Workshop has to say, ah, I can't, we don't sell them anymore. And so the endless fight and the hill I die on will continue, play with Legends units. So here's what we have and here's what's changed. Captain Artemis, is the same in all regards. But he no longer lets you use stratagems when battleshocked, that ability is gone. Instead, he gives lethal hits to the unit, so he's working a lot like a Space Marine Lieutenant. Because our units, the Death Watch units, don't have the Adeptus Astartes keyword anymore, it means that characters like the Apothecary and the Lieutenant can't join Death Watch units, even if you're using them in a Space Marine army. So if you want a Space Marine Lieutenant equivalent, you can have one, and it's Captain Artemis. Lethal hits is better than being able to use stratagems even while battleshocked. Definitely better, and if you're in the detachment, the Ordo Xenos detachment, then there will be a turn where you get sustained hits, and sustained hits plus lethal hits is very nice. The Watchmaster is also otherwise the same, but no longer makes stratagems harder for enemies nearby. His rule now says that you can use a stratagem for zero command points. This, even though it's written there, is not correct. There was a balance patch a few months ago. What it means instead is much like captains, once per battle round when you use a stratagem on his unit, it is one command point cheaper. So if it was two command points, it is one command point. If it was one command point, it's free. There might be an FAQ on this come the Codex release, or it might just be left as standing, you use the balance patch version. The Corvus Black Star has exactly the same stats, exactly the same weapon profiles, and exactly the same weapon options. They are not a dedicated transport, that's not one of their key words. And that seems like an error, because I remember Games Work saying, or very heavily suggesting, that you could add a Black Star with a kill team, and it only counts as one selection. That seems to be how the Imperial Agents with dedicated transports work. The Corvus Blackstar can transport 12 Death Watch infantry in its new version, compared to the old version where it was 12 Adeptus Astartes infantry, or one kill team with all of the crazy things of yes, Terminators are there and bikes are there. With Gravis Marines and Terminators counting extra spaces if they're not from a kill team. Yeah, it was a bit weird. But what this does mean is if we get a Legends version of, say, Death Watch Terminators, or the Proteus Kill Team can have Terminators or a bike, well, if you have a bike, then it can't go in the Corvus Black Star in the Agents version because it's not an infantry model. Unless there's still some extra special rule about that. Unless for some reason it doesn't add the mounted keyword. And any Terminators in a Proteus Kill Team, they're Death Watch infantry. So you could have them in a Corvus Black Star. I don't think that would be too crazy. But we'll see when Legends come out and which legends come out, and what they look like. The Imperial Rhino, it's the same as any other Rhino, really. Same weapon options, same hunter killer missile, same ability to repair, and it's very flexible in the units it can transport. It can transport any agent's models... Models. 
you can put a rhino in a rhino. Rhinos all the way down. Disembark your rhinos. It should fit wholly within three inches or as close as possible. Then disembark the next rhino and Matroska doll your way across to the enemy deployment zone. Then get your Death Watch veterans out of the last one. That last rhino hasn't moved after disembarking, so your Death Watch veterans should be free to move and shoot and charge. If you didn't want your Corvus Blackstar to fly on from the board edge, have it inside a rhino. If you are wondering how disembarking from a transport that has disembarked works, I think you've latched onto the wrong part of this problem. Games Workshop may have done a rules oopsie, and that will be fixed in an FAQ probably a week or so after the Codex officially launches. Just when I thought I was done, again, with Index Errors as a series, they pull me right back in with these Codex Errors. Ah. This is one of our transports for on the ground, for the Death Watch. There's no Land Raiders, it is a dedicated transport, but it doesn't have any of the Death Watch keywords. We also seem to have access to the Inquisitorial Chimera. That has a transport capacity of 13, it's Inquisitor infantry models, so if I've understood it correctly, if we add an Inquisitor to a Death Watch kill team, then they become Inquisitor and their infantry, so that they can travel in the Inquisitorial Chimera. This is also the way that, say, Adeptus Arbites will be able to travel in the Chimera. And the Inquisitorial Agents are there, not because it's anyone with the Agents in the Imperium keyword, it's just that the Inquisitorial Agent unit, even if they don't have an Inquisitor with them, they can also be transported in a Chimera. If you wanted to get a Death Watch unit up the board quickly, this has rapid deployment, so it has a rule more like the Imperial Guard Tarox than the Imperial Guard Chimera. It gets you up the board quickly and lets you disembark, so you could then use frag cannons and your Infernus heavy bolters with the flamer setting on and destroy the enemy with shooting. And the Inquisitorial Chimera can add a few more weapons, like more heavy bolters. A couple of heavy bolters extra wouldn't be amiss. Then we have the Death Watch veterans. The veterans of the Death Watch themselves. And there are so many weapon options. As a box, I'm glad it's still being sold. It has so many arms and heads, enough to cover like 15 models. And at a price of £28, when other units like the Blood Angels Intercessors with an upgrade sprue cost more and don't have as many parts, this is good. Of course, you can go through other shops, and then from War Games Portland in the United States, you can get 10% off. Gap Games in Australia gives you 21% off. Firestorm Games in the UK gives you 12% off. And Fenris Workshop gives you 10% off in Canada. And maybe you want to buy units other than Death Watch veterans. These shops may have them. These are all linked in the description, and using any of the affiliates helps out the channel. So what weapon options do we have? Well, we get Stalker Pattern Bolt Guns and our Shotguns back. Aren't you happy about that? No longer are these long vigil ranged weapons. The Stalker Pattern Bolt Gun is pretty good. It's one shot, it's heavy, it has precision, so it's a sniper. It's on a 3 plus, minus 1 AP, and does 2 damage. The shotgun is a shorter range bolt gun, but with the assault keyword. While one of the special ammunition stratagems does extend the range, so it can be the same range as a bolt gun, and the special ammunition works on all of the weapons, not just bolt weapons now. The shotgun is damage too, that's very nice for killing, say, orc knobs, but I think I'll stick with the bolt gun, because when you have the bolt gun, you also have a power sword. When you have a shotgun, it takes up both your hands. And this shotgun doesn't have like the 8th edition version where you could have multi-selecting different kinds of ammunition. That's why I'm preferring the bolt gun. The loss of long vigil range weapons could be bad if you have some older models with plasma pistols. What do you use them as? I mean, a Storm Bolter could just be a bolt gun. Having multiple combi melters and combi flamers, that's where it gets a bit more difficult. And unlike in the Index, we can't have a missile launcher, even though that Index version said we could. So you just have to proxy that. That missile launcher you have in the squad is actually a frag cannon. You need to understand that this unit has been box locked for good and for bad. So we get shotguns and stalker rifles back, but you lose more options. Two models can have shields because only two shields come in the box. One model can have a frag cannon because only one frag cannon comes in the box, whereas in the index you're allowed to have two frag cannons per unit of five. Same for the Infernus heavy bolters. You get one stalker pattern bolter as an option because there's only one in the box, and that model, because it's holding an ammo clip, it can't have a power weapon. For the combi weapons, only the sergeant can have a combi weapon because that goes on one of his hands. What we do get is a return of the Black Shield. 
So the Black Shields are a weird thing in the Death Watch where someone may just disregard their previous chapter entirely and come to join the Death Watch. It could be because of some great shame that they don't want linked back to their previous chapter. It could be because they're actually a traitor marine and they want to be on the side of the Imperium to kill some aliens or to gather intel or because who knows what the Alpha Legion is doing right now. Captain Titus became a Black Shield after the event of Space Marine 1 in a similar kind of way. Captain Titus has been corrupted by Chaos Inquisitor Thrax. I am no heretic! To hide his identity and not make the new captain of the company, Cato Sicarius, seem illegitimate. So Titus was taken away by the Inquisition with the Black Templars, then he joined the Death Watch, then he nearly died, then he got Primerisified, and now he's back in Space Wing 2. There are two main ways to build the Death Watch veterans. You can go the combat build. So you'll have two models with hammers. One will have the black shield blades, which is just using the left hand power sword and having the right hand power sword instead of a bolt gun. Those are your black shield blades. Then have a sergeant with xenophase blade and shield. This should still be possible because for every five models in the unit, two of them can have shields. It's just any two models. And then the sergeant can swap their power weapon for a xenophase blade. And the fifth man in that squad would have a shield and a sword. If you're making it into a unit of 10, another two with hammers, another two with power swords and shields, but then we can't have another person with the black shield blades, it's only one model in the squad, not one per five, so then we have a final man with a power sword and a bolt gun. If you're going for a more shooting build, for a squad of five you would have a stalker bolt gun, a frag cannon, an infernus heavy bolter, a combi weapon on the sergeant, and sure might as well have a xenophase blade as well, and the last veteran would have that damage to shotgun. Making this up to a unit of 10, you would have another Stalker Bolt Gun, another Frag Cannon, another Infernus Heavy Bolter, and then two more Marines with Death Watch Shotguns. And a shooting style unit will be able to better take advantage of the Death Watch Special Ammunition Stratagems. When the other Death Watch kill teams come out in the official Legends documents in a few weeks time, I plan to cover them and then we'll see if we can make more of an army with the Imperial Agents Codex, something that could work. Already I have covered the stratagems and enhancement changes to the Ordo Xenos Alien Hunters Detachment compared to the Index version of the Black Spear Task Force in this video here. My Death Watch darlings and viewers, have a great day of 40k.